Giovanni, and we did our research on the analysis of EEG data using a fractal design. Um, so to understand kind of our research, we'll give you a brief overview of fractals and fractal dimensions, and then Lillian will go into the results that we found. Um, so to start, what is a fractal? Um, so you start with a simple design, such as a triangle, and you will repeat on its smaller and smaller scales forever. So you keep adding triangles to your original triangle, and then to these new, you continue to add triangles forever like that. And so um, theoretically, you can add these on for infinity, and you'll be getting infinitely small triangles. And in a fractal, any portion, so this portion, will look exactly the same as this portion, or this portion, or any other part of the fractal itself. Um, so what are some real life examples? Um, the major one is snowflakes. So as you can tell, obviously these do not get infinitely small, but the designs on snowflakes are repeated on other, side, other parts of the snowflakes. We use fractals and fractal dimensions um, on brain and uh, brain waves. So what is a fractal dimension? So um, the common idea of dimensions is that there's three of them. A, uh, a line will have one dimension, a plane will have two dimensions, and a cube will have three dimensions. Um, that's true, but there's also more than just the three dimensions that we know about. So, to uh, understand this, if we break up um, the uh, different the lines into two parts, um, where R is our magnification factor, because if you split your line directly in half, you have to increase it by two to get back to your original design. And with the case of a, uh, a plane like this, you have to, if you split it up into four parts, you still have to increase it by two to get back to your original design. Um, and with the cube, you'll split it up into eight parts, but if you increase each part by two, you'll get back to the original design. So we have, we come up with this equation. Uh, the number of self-similar uh, self pieces equals the magnification factor to the power of the dimensions. Um, and then using logarithms, we come up with this equation. So dimensions equals the log of self-similar pieces over the log of the magnification factor. Um, so how does this relate to having more than just three dimensions? Um, so we'll start with Sierpinski's triangle, which is similar to a fractal in the sense that you take a big triangle and you split it up into three smaller triangles inside of it, and continue to do that with each triangle inside of it. <coughs> so if you take Sierpinski's triangle with a height of h and a, a length of l, and you increase the height to 2h and the length to 2l, you now have a magnification factor of 2. So previously this would mean that we have two self-similar objects that would appear. But in fact, we have three of them. So here's your original triangle, and these other two are self-similar, so you have three total self-similar objects. So you double the size, but you get three self-similar shaped triangles. Putting this into the equation that we proved on the last slide, you end up with a dimension of 1.59, which is not an integer number and ends up being between 1 and 2, meaning there are more than just the three common dimensions that we normally know about. So, um, we'll now take a look at uh, the coastline paradox. So how do you, kind of using fractal dimensions, kind of how does it relate more to the data we took and the analysis we use? So the coastline paradox says you're attempting to measure the, co the coastline of Great Britain. If initially you use a ruler, or K in this case, of one unit, you'll find out you have a total length of 28 units to cover the coastline. Now if you were to remeasure the coastline using a K of 0.5 units or a ruler, half of the original ruler, um, what do we think the, the new length will be? Um, just kind of take a moment. Do you think it's going to be less than the original length, equal to the original total length, um, double that, or between the two? Just take a moment to think of it. Yes. Length? Four? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the, total length will be, <laughs> the total length will be between, 20, between the original one and between the, uh, less than the double, which we showed our last slide, the new image. <laughs> Um, so what this says is as you decrease the size of your ruler, you increase the total length of the coastline. Um, so I'll now pass it off to Lillian to kind of go over our results. Okay, so now we get into the fun mathematical theory side of things. Um, so we used our data, or we ran our data through um, this equation, which is the Higuchi equation. And um, so this is how we were able to determine our maximum ruler length, so our maximum K for determining the length of EEG or brain. Um, brainwave signals. And so this is where when people ask how does what you're doing relate to physics, well what physics does is takes a mathematical theory like the Higuchi equation 
and we run real data through it and we're able to apply it to a real um, physical scenario. And so what this equation does is it calculates curve length L um, by taking X, which is the raw EEG data as a function of the initial time M and interval time, so like ruler size K, um, and then this N is our number of data points that we run through, um, and gives you a curve length. And so tying this back into the coastline um, paradox is that as K increases, um, or K is this ruler size, um, which is your interval time, and so as you decrease K, you get different L's. And so what we did is ran our EEG data through, um, and this isn't our data, but this is from a paper um, about it. And so you can create a graph of L versus the log of K, and the slope of that graph is actually your fractal dimension. Um, and so we did a sub-study to determine what would be our optimal K-max. And so as you increase the number of K values you have, the slope or fractal dimension changes. And so we did a study similar to this where when you're starting out with smaller numbers of K-maxes, your change in the slope of the line increases drastically, but as you get to larger K-maxes, you can see that it starts to sort of level off. And so the difference in fractal dimensions becomes insignificant. And so that's how you optimize your K-max. And so we decided to use 55 as our maximum ruler size for our data. Um, so now going into the experiment a little more, we partnered with Dr. Steinmetz group. Um, and so here's a lovely picture of our test subject, TJ, who we didn't actually gather actual data from, but we kind of used it to create our mask um, to show our EEG data. And so on this mask are 32 electrodes, and each electrode corresponds to a specific EEG signal. And so an EEG is a voltage versus time. And so we took this cap and wanted to go from a 3D representation of it to a two-dimensional representation so we could see um, trends of our fractal dimension data. And so that same electrode corresponds to this specific spot um, in our chart. And so here's a little bit of our code. And one great thing about our research was that we created our own code and wrote our own code. And so when we had issues with it or had things we wanted to tweak, we could go into MATLAB and we could find ways to do what we wanted, which gives us a lot of freedom. Um, and so what our code did is it took in data um, from Dr. Steinmetz's group and ran it through the Higuchi method and produced individual fractal dimensions for each of these electrodes. And so um, you can see zero just kind of functioned as a dummy variable for where there wasn't actual data. And these blue um, areas show where our actual data would be plugged into um, our function. And so here is an example where we ran a subject and computed actual fractal dimensions. And so then here's an overlay of an image that we created of the fractal dimensions with the individual electrodes labeled on top. And then here shows how the cooler colors represent smaller <coughs> fractal dimensions and the warmer colors represent larger ones. And so here is kind of, um, I'm about to show you like the first 19 data points for one of the subjects. And so right here you can see like a neutral image, a negative image, um, and then a positive image, so a cute little dog towel on the side. Um, and then that corresponds to specific maps for um, each of the specific events. And so one thing that we found very um, interesting was that overall, if you see this one rest of it, and so there's like 10 of these per patient, because um, there's 196 events per patient, or subject, and so that rest of it um, in the previous slide corresponds to this one here, and then we did one every 20 events, and you can see a general trend that as the experiment goes on, the colors get warmer, so the fractal dimensions increase throughout the experiment. Um, and so, in conclusion, so we learned that there are actually more than the three dimensions that are commonly known about. These are called fractal dimensions. And so fractal dimensions are how um, like nature just kind of naturally organizes itself through chaos. Um, and so that relates to real life examples like 
EEG data, which then we can create a map of these different fractal dimensions and see trends. And so this leads us to the conclusion that this transition between low to high fractal dimension may have practical applications in EEG analysis. And so it'll be really interesting to see where Dr. Marksberger goes with analyzing this data because we were only able to really do a pilot study for about um, 10 patients. And so it'll just be really interesting to see if there's like a correlation between this higher fractal dimension and more complex skin brain activity or what. So yeah, that's it. Do y'all have any questions? Any questions? Yes. Okay. So you saw more of a difference um, over time versus positive negative. Yeah, which we thought that was very interesting. Any other questions? Okay. All right, thank you.